Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about fostering collaboration between corporates and startups, why this is a problem, and a few specific resources within the Philly ecosystem that can help, and uh, just for the broader community. Hold your mic a bit closer. There you gotcha. Go. Yeah. Uh, so let's start with a quick introduction. Uh, I'm Shiel Sarda, a dual degree student at the University of Pennsylvania, studying computer science and fi in finance. I'm also the vice president of Weiss Labs, which is an incubator on campus focusing on tech startups. Uh, so an overview of the presentation, we're going to talk about the problem specifically, why you need to foster this collaboration between corporates and startups, why, sh uh, why both sides should buy into this idea, and then how you can go about doing that. So the what specifically is the problem. And I'm going to approach this from two sides, from the companies and from the startups perspective. So starting with corporations, a few problems, uh, challenges that you face across any scale is uh, protect, you need to protect your strategic position in the ecosystem by becoming aware of these new innovations that can disrupt your core business model. And it's difficult to disrupt your own kind of business model from within because you're busy protecting the cash cows and you want to make sure that they have a dominant position. Whereas from a startup side, you need extra resources and partners to scale up. And, you're, and it's always difficult to access new markets when you're the new player in that space. Uh, here's a chart of a few common uh, critical resources that a lot of startups identified with. Uh, so why should both sides specifically buy into this idea? Uh, and th there's a lot of great stuff that can happen when both, uh, when both sides come together. So from the corporation's perspective, if you do partner with a startup, then this ecosystem can shorten your cycle of innovation. Uh, if you switch from the traditional ecosystem to the startup ecosystem, where all the innovation comes from smaller teams that can work closer together and have shorter kind of implementation cycles, then this can benefit you greatly. And you also get the chance to source latest technologies or novel business ideas and incorporate them into your own. Uh, we're going to talk about a few specific channels uh, or avenues for innovation that companies can go into to do that, but uh, that, that's a core benefit. Whereas if you're a startup, then you get the chance to interact with business leaders from these large developed companies who are on the hunt for a competitive advantage, which makes them potential customers if what you're working on interests them. Uh, another great benefit is mentorship from a talented pool of professionals. Uh, this can cut down on a lot of kind of solving online or finding mentors, uh, developing connections, and then talking to them about your idea and getting valuable feedback from them. So I hope you're sold on the idea by now. Uh, we're going to talk about a few kind of challenge, uh, or a few avenues where you can go to and look for to, to develop this relationship between these two partners. So uh, incubators, hackathons, internal spin-offs. Uh, you guys have probably heard of uh, this by now. So push versus pull, uh, this is the idea of if, if you have a specific need, then you go into the ecosystem and kind of source specific technologies from startups that can help solve that problem. Whereas pull is uh, just looking at broader trends as a whole. And here are a few uh, push versus pull types of and avenues for innovation. So you have accelerators, which is kind of a pull where you go and you look for specific technologies that that you like or core trends, uh, whereas M&A entrepreneurs fall on, fall on the other side of the ecosystem. And both of these have difficult, uh, different capital requirements, success rates. So these can base your choice of uh, like which avenue of innovation you choose to go down to. Uh, whereas based on the market readiness and the maturity of the cycle, then you can choose to either do a product development partnership, a commercial partnership, a go-to-market partnership. Uh, these are all different kind of relation ships that have been tried out before that can work. Talking about the Philly ecosystem specifically, uh, which I am a part of through Weiss Labs I mentioned. Uh, Weiss Labs is a focused, uh, kind of student-focused organization. So if you come to us with a specific challenge, we can pair you up with or help you find talent or startups that are working with this. Uh, whereas at Drexel, they have a similar uh, institution for entrepreneurship that also uh, helps pair uh, companies who are looking for new talent or new budding innovative ideas and can kind of source them into their own ecosystem. Other resources that uh, companies have found helpful that are not constrained geographically are uh, MindSumo, where you can kind of post open challenges that uh, people from all over the world can work on. IXL Innovation Olympics is another one of them. Uh, so here are some helpful resources that you can go to if you'd like to explore these avenues further. And at the bottom is my email if you'd like to contact me. Thank you.